Hi everybody, my name is Cheryl Pete, and I'm the clinical director at the Art Therapy Studio and today we are going to make a paper quilt. Hi and I'm Michelle Epps, the executive director here at Art Therapy Studio and I'm going to be helping Cheryl make a quilt for all of you. All right, wonderful. So the first thing we're going to talk about are what supplies you need for this. Pretty basic supplies. So um, you'll need some kind of paper. So I have some sketch paper here, but if you don't have paper at home, you can use the back of an envelope and cut a um, paper out of that or anything else, paper bag, whatever you can find lying around. Um, you'll also need something to draw with. So I have markers and I have a ballpoint pen. Michelle, you're ready, excellent. Um, you'll need a pair of scissors. Excellent. And a ruler. All right, we're ready. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut some squares of paper out. So use your ruler to mark off two and a half inch squares on your page. So while Michelle is measuring, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about this. This is a really great um, task that you can do with other people in your house, um, or even to connect with people that are outside your household, friends or family that you can't see right now because of social distancing. And everybody can do this on their own and then mail the quilt pieces to one person who will put it all together and make a quilt. All right, I think I'm ready. Beautiful. So Michelle's gonna um, cut out her squares and when you're done, you're gonna have some squares like this. For today, we only need two. All right, I got my two. Perfect, okay. So on one of the squares, what I'd like you to do is draw some kind of pattern. It doesn't matter what kind of pattern you draw, but just create some kind of pattern, abstract. And if I don't have colored pencils or anything like that, is there a way that I can um, use like maybe pens for this or mark if I don't have any markers? I started one a little bit ago. If you can see it here, um, I did the border. You can do this completely with a ballpoint pen or a regular pencil. If you, if you have markers or colored pencils you want to use, great, but if not, a regular old ballpoint pen or a gel pen or a mark, Sharpie, whatever you have around is fine. All right. If you're doing this with a group, um, it's recommended everybody use the same material because it'll be more cohesive when it's all put together. All right. Thank so, a little, um, a little art therapist trick here. Beautiful, Michelle. This is a little tiny piece of paper, but you can use it to practice mindfulness. So, you know, we're going kind of fast right now, but challenge yourself to take as long as possible. It wouldn't be unusual for me to take 20 minutes to draw a pattern on this piece of paper. Take your time and just be in the moment. Okay. So Michelle, you have your, your pattern? Yeah, my one. Very nice. I'm gonna show you the one I did earlier. Oh, cool. Now on the second um, square, what I'd like you to do is create an image. It can be abstract or realistic. Create an image that represents you. Mm. So one of the ways that art can be really helpful is that you can really, while you're making art, pay attention to what you notice with your senses. Watch the, um, the drawing utensil make marks on the paper. Pay attention to what things you hear around you, like the wind blowing outside the window. Pay attention to the temperature that's in the room that you're in. Um, and the more things you can pay attention to with your senses, it really keeps you grounded in the present moment, which helps when you're worrying about something in the future or worrying about something maybe you saw in the news. But if you can give yourself a little art break and just be really, really present while you're working, um, 
that really will have a relaxing effect on you. Now, could you do this project outside? Absolutely, absolutely. The only thing you'd wanna do is be, um, maybe get a rock or something if you're gonna be working on a table so that your pieces don't blow away and you have to go chasing after them. But um, being outside actually, then you could do a whole series, um, maybe you'd do a square every day with something you see outside in nature. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. You could also um, do an abstract square every day showing what your mood is. And then at the end of the month, you could put them all together to make a quilt just just showing that. You can really get creative and change things up for yourself. Once you have this finished, fast forward to when you've collected all the pieces. It may take you a couple days if you have a small group of people working on it. Um, and you'll see from here, I just have a regular piece of paper. You can use a piece of cardboard, a paper bag, whatever you want. But we're just gonna, um, you, can, you can use anything sticky. I have scotch tape. If you have a glue stick, that works too. Um, if you have a bottle of Elmer's glue, perfect. You can use the Elmer's glue. Be careful if you use the Elmer's glue because it can wrinkle the paper. So just put a dot in each corner. But you're just gonna collect all of the squares. And you're gonna attach them to your background and you're gonna alternate the image that represents you and your friends or family and the pattern. Now, if I had Michelle's here and I had um, everybody else's, I would probably lay them all out flat and kind of rearrange them until they looked, looked a certain way. And then once they're done, you can take a picture of it and send it to everybody share it on our Facebook page and see the quilts that we've come up with. All right, I think I've got mine. All right, let's see. There you go. There you go. Excellent. All right, so you can you recap for us a little bit of what we need to do as far as uh, how many days we should do this before sending it to friends? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it, really, it really depends on how big your group is. So you want to probably have no fewer than 12 squares to get a good looking quilt. You can have more than that. So if it's just a couple of people, then let's say it's you and one other person, each person's going to need to make six. I think that the best way to do that is spend 20 minutes every day doing just one so that you're not feeling like you have to rush through them. And then um, if you have a larger group of friends, then maybe everybody makes just one and then mails them all in. So it kind of depends on how many, but I wouldn't, I, I would kind of plan to spend 20 or 30 minutes at a time until you have the number of squares you want collected. All right. And then you had some parting words about what we can do um, as far as my keeping mindfulness with this project. Yeah, so it's really, um, it's really about being completely present and something, um, that I think is always a challenge is working on a tiny piece of paper. Sometimes you think, oh, I'll be done with that in two minutes, but really challenge yourself to go slow. Don't rush, shut out all the distractions and just be with yourself while you do it. Um, pay attention to, like I said, what you can notice with your senses and, and see how long. Don't, don't, don't see how fast you can do it, See how long you can do it on one piece of paper and see what that's like for you. All right. All well, right. Thank you so much for taking us through this wonderful uh, paper quilt. Um, I hope everyone at home gets to enjoy making this with uh, friends, family, especially people that are not living with you. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. And make sure you post what you make on our Facebook page because we want to see. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye. Here. Bye.